Oh, look at that. This, my friends, is not good. But uh, anyone care for a milkshake? No, my friends, your eyes don't deceive you. This is not a weird looking Volkswagen. This, in fact, is a 99 Chevy S10 four cylinder. This truck belongs to a super good friend of the family and they're having some overheating issues. So I figured I would try and help them out. Now there is a little bit of a backstory to this car. They were having some coolant leak and some overheating issues. Took it to a local shop. The shop diagnosed it as a bad engine. That's an awful deep way to go uh, right off the bat. There was also a leaking radiator and I think the thermostat was sticking. So rather than just going all in on the engine, put a radiator in it, they put a thermostat in it and now the car is still overheating. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna walk through what's going on. Now I have checked a couple of things and I'm basically convinced that it's a leaking head gasket, but rather than rolling those diagnostic dice, we're gonna do some more testing and make sure that we're at least in that ballpark. We may not be able to determine whether it's the gasket or the cylinder head uh, without disassembly, but we're gonna get a lot closer than, well, it just needs a whole engine. And we'll see if my quick tests that I did when the car first rolled in were right, or if I was just ready to load up the parts cannon and fire away. First thing we would wanna do is confirm that the car is actually overheating. Now, I don't actually wanna get this car up to temperature yet, so for better or worse, we're gonna take the customer's word on that it's overheating. It would be a solid idea though, real quick, to make sure that the fans are coming on. In this case, we have a mechanical fan, but either way, you would wanna make sure that the fan was spinning. Now, there's a couple of pretty common symptoms when we talk about a failing head gasket. I mentioned overheating as a concern that this customer had. That's one of them. Another one which the customer also had is white smoke out of the exhaust that's going to have kind of a sweet smell. Another thing you might experience would be misfires. That's coolant entering the cylinders, causing a disruption in a proper combustion process, and then getting blown out the exhaust, which then leads to our white smoke. Now, there's probably other things that a head gasket can do as well. However, those are in fact the most common. I wanna start with a couple of basic checks. We know the radiator was replaced, so let's take a look at the coolant. Also, something else that can happen when head gaskets leak is oil and coolant can mix together, either in the cooling system or in the crankcase. So we're gonna check the coolant and we're going to check the engine oil. Let's go ahead and start by checking the coolant. Now, if your engine's up to temp, don't take the radiator cap off. You will have a very bad, dangerous time. Now, I don't know if they replaced the radiator cap along with the radiator, but if you see on this rubber seal here on the cap, there's some grunge on the seal probably clue number one that we have a problem. When we look into the radiator, the very first thing I'm noticing is the level is very low. Usually the radiator is quite a bit more full than this. I'm also noticing that the coolant is kind of brownish and it looks like there's some deposits inside the radiator. When the radiator was replaced, they filled it with new green coolant. So uh, yeah, this coolant looks pretty sad. Let's move over to the coolant reservoir side. As we look inside, we can see it's this reddish brownish color coolant. Definitely not the right deal. I'm also inside this reservoir smelling exhaust gas. Let's go ahead and get a baster and pull some of this coolant out and do a better evaluation of it. As you can see, this color is all kinds of wrong. They may not have done a coolant flush when they did the radiator, but draining the radiator drains the majority of the coolant out of the system. The radiator and thermostat were replaced probably within a thousand miles. And if we shine a light up underneath it, you can see a bunch of deposits floating in the coolant. Let's check our engine oil next and see what it looks like. Oftentimes when coolant and engine oil are mixed together, the oil gets this milkshake type of consistency and color. And unfortunately, that's kind of what we're looking at here. It's very watery, thin, and look at how white that is right there. Not awesome at all. Let's pull a bigger sample of this oil so we can do a better job examining it. Oh yeah. Not only does it stink, but that's milkshakey goodness. Oh man, that is very much the chocolate milkshake syndrome. Now, as bad as this looks after pouring it into the cup, it's actually worse than that. I'm assuming there's a little bit of regular oil at the bottom of the extractor, so this is actually really, really bad. Well, we got nasty oil. We got low coolant, we got nasty coolant, we're getting white smoke, and the car is overheating. All pretty much signs of a failing head gasket. Now keep in mind, just because you have oil and coolant mixed together does not mean it's a bad head gasket. There are other places that oil and coolant can mix, such as oil coolers. That was actually a really common VW problem. Now that we know we're going down the path of a head gasket, there's a number of tests you can do. The fastest and easiest and really like the cheapest one is going to be using a combustion leak detector. This tool is actually a pretty neat tool to have. I'll be sure to throw a link. Super easy to use. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our cylinder here, 
set it in a cup just to hold it standing up. Inside of here is a Schrader valve, so the fluid can't get into the radiator. We'll pull air up through it, and if there's combustion gas in it, it'll change the color of the fluid. We'll fill it to our line. Ooh, this fluid is nice and blue. All right, so we got it filled up there. We'll take this end of our little hose and put it there. Now, some of them will have like a squeeze ball at the top. That works really well too. This one hooks up to engine vacuum. Either one is gonna be just fine. We're gonna start with our engine cold. The cylinder that we filled up with the blue fluid goes right into our radiator. And it's nice because there's a cone at the end. So this should pretty much fit any radiator. I'm actually gonna use my vacuum hand pump here. You can see it bubbling. I'm pull, that means that it's working. I'm pulling air through. Next, we're gonna start the car and let it idle for about 10 minutes. Of course, make sure you're working in a well-ventilated area. After letting the truck run for about five minutes and then pulling vacuum through our tester for about two minutes, as the instructions say, I think it's pretty obvious that our fluid turned yellow. This is the color that the fluid was when we first started, and now you can see it's like this pale yellow. All right, so we ran our test, and as you saw, that fluid turned yellow super duper fast. I really like these combustion gas testers, whether you use the one with the bubble on it or this one that we hooked up to engine vacuum or with the hand pump. It's a great test to run. It's super fast. That changes colors in under two minutes faster if it's really bad. Now, what we haven't determined, though, is do we have a bad head gasket only or do we have a cylinder head that is warped or I guess even a block that's warped? That's not something we're going to know until we do a full teardown. There's also other ways that we can determine whether or not we have a leaking head gasket. Combustion gas leaking into the coolant is only one type of failure. Something else we could have done was pressurize the cooling system, maybe remove the spark plug to see if we're getting coolant into the cylinder. So we have sad coolant, we have sad engine oil, we confirm that we have a leaking head gasket. What's next for this truck? I'm not really sure. I have to deliver some bad news, but hey, you never know, you might get a Chevy S10 cylinder head gasket repair video. In addition to pressurizing the cooling system or using this, this combustion gas detector, we could also do a cylinder leak down test and see if we had air rushing out of the radiator or coolant reservoir. I think in this case though, we pretty much got it nailed. So no sense in doing any further testing until we get the head off, then we're gonna take a straight edge and take some measurements. Something else that we wanna keep in mind when we're talking about making this repair is going to be, what is some of the consequential damage potential? How long has this been going on in that coolant mixed with oil? When coolant's mixed with engine oil, it'll reduce the lubricity and the lubricating properties of the engine oil. So we might actually have more damage than just a head gasket in the form of damaged bearings or whatnot. Uh, it's gonna kind of be up to the customer how deep we really wanna go. I'm not totally sure yet. So I'm gonna wrap it up there. Questions, comments, drop them down below. I'll put links to some of the stuff we used today down in the description. With that, I'm out. Have an awesome day. And I'll talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.